my friends. I am so happy to meet all of you. My name is Miss Molinari, and for many of you, I am your first grade teacher. Um, now, I will be recording many videos, all of them for your literature and comprehension portion of your OLS lessons. So, a little bit of housekeeping here. I follow the three times rule. The first time I will read the story and you'll need to have your book handy, so I always let you pause the video and go get it. The first time I will read the story and I would like you to pay attention to the pictures, which means you have to have your book. The next time you listen to the video, you'll listen to it at least twice. I would like you to follow along and finger point to the words as I read. And I'll stop every so often to maybe ask a question for you to think about. So you want to make sure, you know, and I'll try and tell you where we are when we, when I go back to reading. The third time that you read this story is when I would like you to practice reading it with or to your learning coach. Now that will help as you now know a bit of the story as you've listened to it with the pictures. Remember, we always use the pictures to help us know what the story's about. And then when you listen to it again and hear me read it while you're finger pointing, it goes in through your eyes and your ears and your fingers and gets into your brain. Okay. And so the more senses that we can get into our reading, the more you're going to understand it. So we, we see and we see with our ears and our eyes. See how I did that? And we also hear through our fingers. It goes into our brains. Okay? So now if you need to, and this will be the lesson for 1.2, 1.1 and 1.2. Oops, there's my mistake for the year. Don't tell anybody. Okay, so if you need to, go ahead and pause the video and please go get the book Bedtime for Francis by Russell Hoban. Okay? Three, two, one, pause it, go! <laughs> okay, I hope you're back. I hope, you know, if you were listening to me dancing, that's just how it is. Okay, and so this is for um, the first two days of, of school, which would be um, Wednesday and Thursday of this week, day 1.1, uh, lesson 1.1 and 1.2. So you have your books. Remember, you're going to listen the first time and follow along with the pictures, okay? All right, capiche, capache. Bedtime for Francis, and this is the title page. And I'll always talk about that. It lists the title of the book and the authors, all right? This story is also published by HarperCollins. And while I do not own the rights to the book, this is for educational purposes. I'm not making any money off of this. This is solely to help my kiddos in INDLS learn. And anyone else who wants to listen to this story, it's a great story. Okay. Now the next page, it says, this one is for Ursula. This is the dedication page. Oh, you can't even, there we go. And a lot of stories have a dedication page because when an author writes the stories, sometimes they dedicate or write it for someone special. All right, we turn the page. Okay, remember, follow the pictures, okay? The big hand of the clock is at 12. The little hand is at 7. It is seven o'clock. Look at the, do you see the picture? It is bedtime for Francis. Mother said, it is time for bed. Father said, it is time for bed. Francis said, I want a glass of milk. All right, said father. All right, said mother. You may have a glass of milk. Francis drank the milk. All right, let's turn the page. Oh, I like milk. I like chocolate milk. Carry me to my room, father, said Francis. All right, said father. Piggyback, said Francis. Now, can you see the picture? What's father doing? He's carrying Francis. So father carried her piggyback to her room. Father kissed Francis goodnight. Mother kissed Francis goodnight. Francis said, may I sleep with my teddy bear? Father gave her the teddy bear. Francis said, may I sleep with my doll too? Mother gave her the doll. Good night, said father. Good night, said mother. Did you kiss me? Said Francis. Yes, said mother. Yes, said father. Turn the page and let's look at the picture. 
Oh, oh, I like her bad. Can you turn to your learning coach and tell your learning coach what is in the bed with Francis? I see two friends in the bed with Francis. Do you see them hanging out with her? And I also see her kissing her mother or father. Who is she giving a kiss to? And how can you tell? Turn and tell your learning coach. Okay, I'm going to read. You look at the picture on page eight. Kiss me again, said Francis. Father kissed her again. Mother kissed her again. They closed the door. May I have my door open, said Francis. Father opened the door. Good night, said mother. Good night, said father. Good night, said Francis. Francis could not sleep. She closed her eyes, but she still could not sleep. So she began to sing a little song about the alphabet, and she made it up as she went along. Turn the page. Oh, look at Francis at the top of page 10. Does, is she still awake? And who is under her paw? All right, look at the picture while I read. A is for apple pie, B is for bear, C is for crocodile combing his hair, D is for dumplings. Francis kept singing through E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, and R. And she had no trouble until she, trouble, until she got near the end of the alphabet. What do you think was her trouble? Look at the picture. S is for sailboat, T is for tiger, U is for <gasps> underwear down in the dryer. Frances stopped because dryer did not sound like tiger. She started to think about tigers. She thought about big tigers and little tigers, baby tigers and mother and father tigers, sister tigers and brother tigers, aunt tigers and uncle tigers. Now I'm going to stop there. We should include grandma tigers and grandpa tigers and friends tigers, right? Okay. I wonder if there are any tigers around here, she said. Frances looked around her room. She thought maybe she could see a tiger in the corner. She was not afraid, but she wanted to be sure. Wow. So I'm looking at the top of page 10 again before we turn it, and I thought Frances was asleep. But after you heard me read, she's not. So can we think about what her trouble is? It has something to do with finding tigers. Okay, let's turn the page. Page 12, you're going to look at the picture on page 13. Oh, remember we just said about finding tigers? Look at her face and look at mine. What do you think she might be doing? I'm going to read and you look at the picture. So she looked again. She was sure she could see a tiger. She went to tell mother and father. There is a tiger in my room, said Francis. Did he bite you, said father? No, said Francis. Did he scratch you, said mother? No, said Francis. Then he is a friendly tiger, said father. He will not hurt you. Go back to sleep. Do I have to, said Francis. Yes, said father. Yes, said mother. Turn the page. Oh, look at the page of 14 and look at the page of fifth top of 15. Oh, hmm. What do you think is going on in those pictures? All right, you look at the pictures while I read page 14. Father kissed her, mother kissed her. Frances went back to bed and finished her song on the way. She closed her eyes again. She still could not sleep. Frances opened her eyes and looked around. Look at page 15, that purple whatever it is on the chair. What do you think it is? I, I, I think I see buttons, but I'm not sure. Page 15. She saw something big and dark. Giants are big and dark, she thought. Maybe that is a giant. I think it is a giant. I think that giant wants to get me. She went into the living room. Turn the page. Okay, look at page 17 as I read page 16. 
Mother and father were watching television and having tea and cake. Francis said, There is a giant in my room. May I watch television? No, said mother. No, said father. Francis said, The giant wants to get me. May I have some cake? Father gave Francis a piece of cake. Father said, How do you know he wants to get you? Francis said, Isn't that what giants do? Father said, Not always. Why don't you ask him what he wants? Francis went back to her room. She went right over to the giant. She said, What do you want, giant? Okay, look at that picture. Turn the page. Okay. Top of page 18. Oh, now we know what it is. What is that? I see buttons. Do you see a, there's, there's ties and bows and I think I see a collar. Let's listen to page 18. She took a good look at him. There was no giant. It was just a chair and her bathrobe. Look at that picture. Can you see it looking like a bathrobe, my friends? So she went to bed again. Frances was not very tired and she did not close her eyes. She looked up at the ceiling. There was a crack in the ceiling and she thought about it. Look at page 19. Do you see the picture of Frances in her bed looking up at the crack? Maybe something will come out of that crack, she thought. Maybe bugs or spiders. Maybe something with a lot of skinny legs in the dark. Turn the page. Look at page 20 and 21. She went to get father. He was brushing his teeth. Francis said, something scary is going to come out of the crack in the ceiling. I forgot to brush my teeth. Father said, you brush your teeth and I will have a look. Page 21. Francis brushed her teeth. Father came back and said, nothing could come out of such a little crack. But if you are worried about it, get somebody to help you watch. You can take turns. What good advice. Turn the page, page 22. <gasps> Francis told her teddy bear to watch. They took turns for a while. Then Francis got tired of it and let Teddy do all the watching. Francis got up and went to the bathroom. When she came back, she was not sleepy at all. The window was open and the wind was blowing the curtains. <gasps> Look at page 23. I see the wind blowing the curtains. I do not like the way those curtains are moving, said Francis. Maybe there is something waiting very soft and quiet. Maybe it moves the curtains just to see if I am watching. She went into mother and father's room to tell them. Turn the page. Look at page 25. They were asleep. I'm looking at the picture. It looks like father is asleep. Francis, oh, and now the second line on page 24. Francis stood by father's side of the bed very quietly, right near his head. She was so quiet that she was the quietest thing in the room. She was so quiet that father woke up all of a sudden with his eyes wide open. He said, oof. Why do you think he said oof? Okay, I'm in the middle of the page. Francis said, Francis said, there is something moving the curtains. May I sleep with you? Father said, listen, Francis, do you want to know why the curtains are moving? Why, said Francis. That's the wind's job, said Father. Every night the wind has to go around and blow all the curtains. How can the wind have a job, said Francis. Turn the page. Page 26, I'm going to read and you're going to look at the picture on 27. Everybody has a job, said Father. Now I'm going to stop there. If you're listening to this and finger pointing and following along, you're going to sing the word everybody is kind of slanty writing. That means you, you stress it. And I've done that earlier in the book. So I'm going to reread that sentence. And those of you looking at the picture, keep doing that. But those of you that are finger pointing, I want you to hear how I say it. Everybody has a job, said Father. I have to go to my office every morning at nine o'clock. That is my job. You have to go to sleep 
so you can be wide awake for school tomorrow. Oh, there's another slanty word. That is your job. See how I did that? Francis said, I know, but father said, I have not finished. If the wind does not blow the curtains, he will be out of a job. If I do not go to the office, I will be out of a job. And if you do not go to sleep now, do you know what will happen to you? I will be out of a job, said Francis. No, said father. I will get a spanking, said Francis. Right, said father. <gasps> okay, look at 27. I'm going to read it. Good night, said Francis. She went back to her room. Francis closed the window and got into bed. Suddenly there was a noise at the window. She heard a bump and thump. I know something will get me this time, she thought. Turn the page. Look at the picture. She jumped out of bed and went to tell mother and father. When she got to their door, she thought about it some more and decided not to tell them. She went back to her room. Frances heard the noise at the window again. She pulled the covers over her head. I wonder what it is, she thought. Look at the picture on 29. Do you know what's at the window? Turn and tell your learning coach, please. If it is something very bad, Father will have to come and chase it away. Those slanty words. She pulled off the covers and stood on her bed so she could look out the window. She saw a moth bumping against the window. It's just like a butterfly, but a little different. Turn the page. Oh, I'm going to read page 31 and you look at the picture on page 30. Bump and thump. His wings smacked the glass. Whack and smack. Whack and smack made Frances think of a spanking, and all of a sudden she was tired. She lay down and closed her eyes so she could think better. She thought there were so many giants and tigers and scary and exciting things before that I am pretty tired now. That is just a moth, and he is only doing his job, the same as the wind. His job is bumping and thumping, and my job is to sleep. So she went to sleep and did not get out of bed again until mother called her for breakfast. Turn the page, and that is it. Now, before you stop the video, I want you to think about, and you may have to go back and look at the pictures, what happened in the beginning of the story? What were some of the things that happened in the middle? And then in the end, what happened in the end of the story? A good practice is to look at the pictures and tell your learning coach at least one thing maybe that that picture reminds you of, okay? Remember, this is for lessons 1.1 and 1.2 in OLS. Yo te amo, mis amigas y mis amigos. I can't wait to see you soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Adios.